All right, we're picking up on page two of our packet. We're still gonna be using slope intercept form and our tables to fill out our values and graphing. So we're gonna do three problems together and then the rest of the page you're gonna try on your own while you're pausing the video and then checking your work at the end. So we're gonna do number seven, number eight, and number 13 together. These ones I just wanna review a couple of topics before you try them on your own. Okay, so let's start with number seven. If we look at our equation, we have y equals negative five x. So we still need to identify our slope and our y-intercept. So remember our slope is what's attached to our variable x. So we have negative five. Remember, negative five is technically hiding over an invisible one, which we need when we do the run on our graph. Because it's not negative five over zero, we still have a one there. So when we're doing our rise and our run, we need that one for our run values. Now, the difference about this problem is that we don't have plus or minus anything in our equation. So our y-intercept, since there's no numerical value there, our y-intercept is just going to be zero. So we'll just label that. And then our ordered pair then is going to be at the origin because our x value for our y-intercept is always zero. And in this case, we don't have a plus or minus b. So our y-intercept is going to be at the origin, at the point zero, zero. Then we're gonna do our rise, which is down and right. So we're gonna go down five, right one. To go the opposite way, I'm gonna go up five, left one. And then you're gonna use your straight edge to connect those there. Which again, I'm just using a plain old note card. Okay, so there's our graph. And now I'm gonna show you the table. So I'm gonna flip. and show you our table value. So our equation was y equals negative five x. For this one, since we just have an integer as our slope, I'm gonna go ahead and do the negative one, zero, one values for our inputs. Set up our table here. Just my little quick way of doing that. And then we're gonna input <clears throat> our values for x in order to get our y values, which should be those, and then write our ordered pairs. Okay, let's go back and check our graph. Negative 1, 5. That's on there. And 1, negative 5. On there also. Okay, so there's number seven. All right, looking at number eight, the only thing I want to draw your attention to is that for our slope, what number is technically hiding there? A negative what? A negative one, which would be over an invisible one. So that's all I wanted to draw your attention to there. There's your y-intercept. <clears throat> but just to remember that if there is not a number in front of a variable, we know that it's a one. And in this case, we need to put it over a one for when we do the rise over run. And then I'm not gonna graph this one for you, but I do wanna show you the setup of the table. So for number eight, we have y equals negative x minus six. And again, I'm gonna use my negative one, zero, one for these because we have integers, we don't have any fractions. So when you're inputting your x values into your table, 
you just want to make sure that we're still keeping the multiplication because we have a negative x. So we want to make sure I just put the x values in parentheses like I normally do in the table anyway. But we want to make sure we don't mix up any of the signs there. Okay, so there's your setup for number eight. You can finish that one um, on your own. And then we're gonna do one more problem together and then the rest will be go at your own pace. Okay, so you can finish eight, but first we're gonna do number 13 together. So looking at number 13, this equation is different because our y-intercept comes first and then our x, um, our slope and our x value. So the only thing you wanna be careful with and number 15 and 14 and 16 are like this too. The only difference is that we're in a different order. So if you want, you can rewrite the equations or you can just take the information as long as you're making sure you're putting it in the right spot. So we want to keep our um, slope, our slope is going to stay with our x value. So we just want to make sure that we keep them in the corresponding parts. So then that's going to be our y-intercept. Okay. So let's just look at 15 too. Remember, you can rewrite it so it's in the right order. Or as long as you know that your slope is what's attached to your variable, plus or minus your y-intercept, you'll be fine. Just as long as you keep them in the right order. Okay, and then when you're setting up your tables, same thing, just make sure that you're inputting your inputs into your X. Okay, so number seven is finished, and then we started eight, 13, and 15. So I'd go ahead, finish those ones, and then work through the other ones. I'm gonna put the work up for you just silently. <clears throat> so pause the video here, work through, check your answers as you go or at the very end, ask if you have questions or if you need help. For this one, I'm just doing two points because the other points would be off the graph. So we'll just check it.
Okay, so there's that one. Back to the graph. And there's 11. <clears throat> okay, so there's that one. Use my straight edge. Errors on the end. There's that.
So we're just gonna do two points on this one. 